Hey, I'm Nathan Crane. I'm Derek Crane. We're the co-founders of Crane Factor and hosts of the Activating Greatness podcast. Activating Greatness is about living with greatness every single day, understanding yourself and being true to who you are and creating greatness in every area of your life. And in today's episode, we are diving into the question, is a plant-based diet healthier for you than say a more animal-based diet with meat, dairy, things like that. In this episode, we're going to talk about what really is a plant-based diet and what that consists of and the different variations of it. We're going to share quotes and experiences and scientific data from leading researchers as well as uh, leading athletes. We're going to talk about a few different myths associated with a plant-based or vegan diet, for example. Uh, One of the myths being blood type and what diet is actually correct and best for you depending on your blood type. We're going to talk about protein and, mm-hmm. you know, protein excess, protein deficiency. Are you getting enough protein? Maybe you have too much. Where do you get it in a plant-based diet? Mm-hmm. What's the difference between pro- protein in a plant-based diet versus, uh, you know, a meat-based diet? We're going to talk about when people have tried a plant-based mm-hmm. diet or have gone vegan, for example, the challenges they've had and why they've had those challenges. and you know, especially answer the question of, oh, well, it didn't work for me and what that actually means and what those people were missing. And we're going to talk about the benefits and detriments of a animal-based diet, for example, Uh, talk about the benefits and detriments of meat and dairy so that you have a larger body of knowledge to make a decision upon whether you just want to be healthier and heal your body or you want to perform better as an athlete We're going to talk about all of it in this podcast, so make sure you stay tuned for the whole thing. And before we get started, we want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Performance Tea. Performance Tea is something both Derek and I drink and love. One thing we really like about it is that it's handcrafted in small batches and made of the best medicinal herbs. We're both huge believers and consumers of herbs and love the healing benefits that herbal medicine brings to the body. Go to performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. They have incredible teas for energy, focus, recovery, and balance. Again, that's performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount today. And so let's dive right into today's episode. So I'd like to open up with a quote from John Hines, who Mm -hmm. is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion and owner of a monkey bar gym. He says, I literally went from crippling pain to good health in a matter of weeks. When I made the decision, I was very worried I'd lose all my hard gain muscle. Wrong. I'm currently the same lean body mass and weight I was in 2003 before I switched to a plant-based diet. Mm. This life transformation happened over eight years ago and I've been going strong ever since. So let's talk about what is a plant-based diet from our definition first and just get that out on the table. Mm -hmm. So my definition is plant-based diet is a diverse, abundant, balanced, and primarily fresh diet composed of plants, including fruits, nuts, seeds, berries, legumes, grains, flowers, herbs, and vegetables, basically no meat or dairy of any kind. Mm -hmm. Within there, you have a few different factions, if you will, or, or different segments of plant-based, vegan, raw, mm-hmm. cooked, partially cooked, mostly cooked, uh, vegetarian, things like that. And we'll talk about some of those differences, but again, primarily plant-based, mostly meaning no meat or dairy of any kind. And three really important words we're going to talk about in a little bit, diverse, abundant, and balanced. Mm-hmm. So Derek, before we get deeper into this, mm-hmm. why don't you talk a little bit about uh, your path and your journey um, with a plant-based diet. Oh uh, yeah, so really excited about this topic. Diving right into it. You know, I've been an athlete all my life, doing soccer, baseball, basketball, football. Really dove deep into football um, throughout high school, even playing college football. Gained weight, got up to 205 pounds. Was uh, even the team leader of the football team. But what I was finding out was that my digestive system just was not cooperating with the foods that I was eating Mm. and trying to gain weight and trying to make weight and, you know, also at the same time trying to be at the highest level that I possibly can. And then 
the first doc documentary that I watched that opened up my eyes into even a plant-based diet was called The Beautiful Truth. Right. And it first just showed the signs of the mainstream agricultural system, you know, force-fed GMO corn, um, all the antibiotics and hormones and just kind of, well, the truth, the beautiful truth. So that then it gave me insight and I said, well, I don't want, one, I don't want to support that. Two, I don't want to put that into my body. Three, what can I do differently? Mm -hmm. So right away, I just transitioned into a vegetarian diet. One thing that happened instantly was that my digestive system improved, which mm. was huge for me as an athlete because feeling bloated and constipated and just not right within the digestive system affects everything. So when I, when I noticed that, when I suddenly had that experience, it was like, wow, there's really something to this. So then, so then I dove more, I actually started doing in-depth cleanses, doing like even five-day juice fasts, 10-day juice fasts, growing up on what I call the SAD diet, the standard American diet, and all the effects that that had on my digestive system and everything was suddenly starting to get balanced out. So the fact that I was just feeling better and still performing at a very high level, and then another thing that happened was that I found out that my energy improved mm. and my sleeping improved. So those three main things just brought so much insight into, wow, there is something very potent and powerful with a plant-based diet. And then, you know, it's going on eight years later now, and I'm still noticing benefits, still cleansing, still diving deep into it, adding in herbs and continuously seeing benefits from all of it. You know, it reminds me of um, around the time that I was starting to experiment more watching documentaries like mm -hmm. that as well beautiful truth a, a number of documentaries i've i've was watching back then and have still have seen today doing interviews with medical doctors and mm -hmm. um, naturopaths and holistic practitioners and people who've healed cancer and things mm -hmm. like that and it just all that continued to lead me down the path of more plants more plants more plants mm -hmm. more plants and then you start hearing stories about you know uh let's say movie actors, for example, like mm. there's a whole list of, uh, or really intelligent scientists like Albert mm. Einstein, or really incredibly talented people like Leonardo da Vinci or Nikola Tesla or even the Buddha, right? Mm. Who all were and many are plant-based, mm. vegan or vegetarian for, for a number of reasons, uh, either uh, health reasons or uh, because of compassion for animals or because of sustainability of the environment mm. um, or a combination of all those. And if you see that millions of people are thriving on a plant-based mm. diet, then the question is, well, if they are, then why can't I? Mm -hmm. And I got into, you know, I grew up on meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. We did, you know, I mean, yeah. I remember when I was 15 and pretty much living on my own, we'd go out and hunt our own deer and bring it home and cut it up and literally that day would have meat and potatoes like yeah that was it you know <laughs> so i grew up on you know drinking half gallon uh a milk a day huge mm -hmm. handfuls of cheese processed food mm -hmm. you know mcdonald's burger king things like that lots of meat lots of dairy yeah. what was interesting is by the time i was like 18 19 i i same thing like i had major digestive problems yeah. like low energy lack of mental clarity mm -hmm. and started doing cleanses, started cleaning out my body, detoxing, fasting. And what happened was like I started feeling the inside of my body for the first time. And mm -hmm. it was like my organs started feeling like refreshed and renewed. And I said, there's something to this. And it mm -hmm. leads you down a rabbit hole. Anyone mm -hmm. tuning in who's either been on this journey or for a long time or just starting this journey, you can go down this really deep rabbit hole of information and misinformation. Mm -hmm. And you know, I literally have thousands and thousands of hours of research on this exact topic mm -hmm. because I really wanted to know, and still am learning every day, what is the best diet for the human body? And I, mm -hmm. I do agree with the statement that I've heard from many people uh, who say, oh, there's not one diet for every single person. I do agree with that to some extent. Mm -hmm. I'll talk, talk about that in a moment. But what I found was the more plants I started eating, the better I felt. Mm -hmm. 
the more plants I started eating, the more energy I had, mental clarity, ability to focus. Um, my, when I got my antioxidants and uh, tests done, blood tests, things like that, it was like it was getting better and better mm -hmm. as my diet was getting more and more plants. Um, and what I found was a diversity of plants is so, so incredibly important, which, which we'll talk about more in a little bit as well. And so what I saw was the deeper and deeper I went down this rabbit hole, mm -hmm. uh, the more commonalities started to appear among people with chronic degenerative diseases mm -hmm. who switched to plant-based diets, um, diverse diets, abundant, fresh, you know, vegan diets, and all of a sudden their cancers went away, their diabetes mm -hmm. disappeared, their um, heart disease you know, went away. All these chronic ailments that, yeah, when you're young, you don't think about, mm -hmm. but, you know, by the time you're 50, 60, 70, and then it hits you, sometimes it's too late, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are people who really get on top of it, completely switch their diet and start focusing on the things that heal your body, and all these diseases start going away. And so, to me, like, I got into a plant-based diet first, the, through the health route because mm -hmm. all the research started pointing to me like this is the diet of longevity the mm -hmm. diet of uh, being healthy and vibrant and energetic and preventing disease and all these great things that we want mm -hmm. and then later and I started seeing so much what was going on with the treatment of animals as well mm -hmm. um, and just the fact that I you know killing animals like became less and less appealing to me mm -hmm. then you know the compassion side of it for me coupled with the health side was just so clear that you know um, that I just knew that there was no longer any need to put animal products in my body at all and for some people that's not quite clear yet because of some of these myths like the blood mm -hmm. type myth and the mm -hmm. you know protein myth and some of these things that we're going to talk about but you know this has been around a very, very long time, right? A lot of this stuff isn't new. No, oh, so true. Just, just like Hippocrates said, let thy food be thy medicine. So when, when your food is suddenly becoming your medicine, no longer is there a need for pharmaceuticals. No longer is there, is there a need for that when you're taking action upon what you're intentionally putting into your body. And it's this herbalist that I just absolutely love because of his work. His name is Dr. Christopher. Mm -hmm. Uh, treating people with so many different illnesses, diseases, ailments, puts them on a plant-based diet, just as you stated from the intro, and then combined with herbs, and suddenly the, these people's ailments and diseases start reversing. Right. And you, you know, this is a this is a doctor who's a master herbalist who put all his patients onto this specific diet combined with herbs and saw a huge success. And so one thing I've heard a lot from people uh, who want to go to a plant-based diet but don't believe they can is that somehow either their doctor or they read about it, someone told them that they have the wrong blood type for plant-based mm. diet, right? That, oh, you're a certain type of body or a certain type of blood type, you can't be on a plant-based diet. And that's the first myth we totally want to debunk because um, where that came from uh, the blood type diet is really what it's called. It was popularized by a naturopathic physician called Dr. Peter Diadamo in the year 1996. And, you know, he became a best-selling author and the information became very widespread. And so people with certain blood types thought, well, if I have this blood type, I need to have animal products. And I have this blood type, I need to have more plants and less animal products. And the reality is there was never really any... Uh, proven scientific study to validate those claims whatsoever. So what happened was, okay, that information came out, then researchers stepped in, scientists stepped in, and data started being comprised, and they started studying you know, this topic to see if it was true. Uh, for example, researchers from the University of Toronto found that the theory behind, because it was a theory at the time, uh, the popular blood type diet, uh, is not valid at all. Uh, quoting this study, they say, based on the data of 1,455 study participants, we found no evidence to support the blood type diet theory. This is the senior author of the study, um, who's associate professor and Canada Research Chair 
um, at the U of T. He also says the way an individual responds to any one of these diets has absolutely nothing to do with their blood type and has everything to do with their ability to stick to a sensible vegetarian or low carbohydrate diet. Um, for example, eating a type A diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, was associated with better health markers. But this effect was seen in everyone following the type A diet, not just mm. individuals with type A blood. So basically what they're saying is anybody who eats more fresh fruits and vegetables is going to have better health markers. Doesn't matter what your blood type is. And you know, you can look at multiple studies that have been, been done on this and have totally debunked this myth that mm. You know, if you have a certain blood type that you need to have more meat in your diet. It's absolutely not true. Now, where people have problems with this is when we get into the third myth is they're not getting enough diversity in their diet when they switch to plant-based. But we'll get there in a little bit. Just want to clarify that for you. If you've ever been told, you know, oh, you have a certain blood type, you, you need meat. It's absolutely not true. And that leads us into myth number two, because a lot of people are told they need meat because of protein, mm -hmm. iron, B12, things like that. Yeah, from my own personal experience, I find that I get plenty of protein through plant-based diet. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting protein through, like, for instance, I'll switch out wheat pasta for lentil pasta, mm -hmm. adding in kale, broccoli, the legumes, adding in different variety of nuts, all of those have a lot of protein into it that the body actually can assimilate and utilize. And so through through the athletics that I've been doing, you know, I did CrossFit for a year and a half, went straight into boxing, and there's so much um, energy exertion going on, I'm finding that I still have energy throughout the day. Also managing a gym, personal training, doing my own workouts, uh, with all that, I find that I'm still building lean muscle mass, being able to do all the workouts that I wanna do, be able to be there for other people, personal train them through it. And I'm finding that not getting enough protein is not even an issue in my entire world. Yeah, and if you actually look at uh, some data of the average person who is on uh, an animal-based diet, they actually have excess protein. Yeah. And too much protein that you're not assimilating mm -hmm. is hard on the kidneys. It can cause kidney problems. And so um, one thing you actually have to be concerned about nowadays, uh, mm -hmm. because people are eating so much meat and drinking so much milk, is too much protein. Mm -hmm. So just to give an idea of how much protein is the right amount, uh, the dietary reference intake, to DRI, is 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight or 0.36 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which means an average, let's say 150 pound man or woman, if you're a 150 pound woman, only needs about 54 grams of protein in a day. Mm -hmm. 54 grams of protein if you weigh 150 Pounds. Now, that's nothing. Like 54 grams of protein you can get in one or two meals with a plant-based diet yep. pretty easily. Yeah. Um, it's not difficult at all. Uh, again, if you have a diverse diet and you're eating all these different sources of plants, as we've talked about. Um, now, that's kind of an average person, more sedentary person. The more athletic you become, uh, the more you get into weightlifting, the more that you're tearing muscle tissue down by working out and having to build it back up. Now, obviously, those numbers change. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's like super fit, who's working out a lot, who is, you know, trying to build a lot of muscle, then you need more protein because you're breaking down a lot of muscle every single day that you're lifting, right? So for athletes, it's uh, recommended that it's close to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. It's actually less than that, but just to make it easy, that's mm -hmm. close to what it is. So like, you know, I, I weigh almost 200 pounds right now um, for how much I'm training and weightlifting and breaking down muscle. Um, I get anywhere from 170 to 200 grams of protein a day. Mm -hmm. And that's a non-issue for me on plants, right? And so that's, again, most people have excess protein. So, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get good solid sources of protein, not to mention amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, mm -hmm. um, it's abundant in all plants and it's abundant in more plants than others, right? 
You're going to you're going to find more protein in legumes and beans, nuts and seeds. You're going to find more protein in certain things like uh, you know, tofu, tempeh which is soy based or peas, um, any kind of like a seed for example, beans, that kind of stuff. And it's not an issue to get enough protein for your body or to get enough nutrients for your body for that matter from a plant-based diet if you're just paying a little bit of attention to what you're eating. Um, for example, Carl Lewis, uh, you may remember that name, is one of the most famous track and field uh, runners of, of all time. He won nine Olympic gold medals. He said, I found that a person does not need protein from meat to be a successful athlete. In fact, my best year of track and field was the first year I ate a vegan diet. And that's Carl Lewis, again, an athlete who won nine Olympic gold medals, right? Um, and there are many. I mean, you can look up hundreds mm -hmm. of vegan athletes that are bodybuilders, that are you know, crossfitters, that are weightlifters, Olympic lifters, rowers, swimmers, you name it, endurance mm -hmm. or or short speed or strength and they're plant-based or vegan and they have no problem building muscle mass, having strength. And actually, I've interviewed people who once they switched to a plant-based diet, they actually got stronger, they won more competitions, they did better. Yeah, it's really cool to see. I'm finding out that more and more people are actually gravitating towards a vegan diet because they're seeing other athletes being able to actually reach higher levels off of switching to a vegan diet. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. And um, again, if, if your concern is protein, you don't have to be concerned because yeah. you protein is in basically all plants. It's just finding out how much you need dependent on your goals and then going from there. And yeah. And I like, I like how you're saying to have it diverse and balanced so that you're getting it through multiple sources. Like don't just make a protein source, lentils, for instance. Right. Be able to balance it out, add in a lot of fresh greens, add in the different nuts and berries, add in broccoli, add in you know spinach, be able to diversify it so that you're also getting all those micronutrients from it as well. So that leads us to, let's say myth number three, which is kind of a myth and kind of not because it's a real experience for people, but I've had Many people tell me over the years, I tried to do plant-based diet, but I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I felt sick, I felt bad, I had no energy, I got weak, etc. And the reason I call that a myth is because they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. The problem is they didn't have the diversity and the balance. Uh, a lot of people who try to go vegan, they're just like, oh, I need lots of protein, so I just eat nuts and seeds yeah. and grains. They just have lots of nuts and seeds and grains. Well, guess what? Those are fine for carbohydrates and protein and a few other things, but what you're missing is all your important phytonutrients, minerals, amino acids, and vitamins yeah. that you get in your dark leafy greens, that you get from uh, your fruits, that you get from your berries, right? All these phytonutrients that help rebuild the cells, that help fight mm -hmm. cancer, that help mm -hmm. you know, prevent diabetes, that help your body regenerate, that help your brain to be nourished. All these things are in your vegetables, so diverse vegetables, your, you know, they say eat the rainbow, it's absolutely true. Have cabbage and kale, have mm. peas and broccoli, have carrots and onions and garlic, which are getting more into herbs and root vegetables, right? Um, all the, it's so important to get this diversity every single day. Then your fruit, your citrus, uh, your uh, apples and oranges and lemons and limes and uh, if you can get access to mangoes and obviously bananas and a good diverse profile of all kinds of fruits, super important for those vitamins, for the cleansing, for the detoxing. Um, it's really, really vital that you get a good balance of all these things every day. I mean, you should have uh, a, a good percentage of your meals, you know, that are fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, you're just eating pasta and Cheetos and Doritos and mm -hmm. you know because you can be on a vegan diet and be incredibly unhealthy yes. and I know people that are and that's why they fail because one they're eating garbage processed food yeah. that's full of sugar that's full of additives that has no nutrient value whatsoever and then they feel like crap of course mm -hmm. um, or you look at somebody who eats 
mostly fresh, that's very diverse, that's high in vegetables and fruits with a balanced amount of nuts and seeds and legumes um, that is significantly healthier. And it all depends, it all depends on what your goals are. So that's why I said at the beginning, uh, I do agree with the fact that there's not one diet that works for everybody with this caveat. That I believe that and have seen and the research shows that a plant-based diet does work for everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, within that, there's a thousand different diets you can have as a plant-based diet, and it all depends on where you're at with your health and what your goals are. I would not prescribe or tell somebody to eat the way I'm eating right now mm -hmm. if they had cancer and were frail and weak and didn't work out at all. Mm -hmm. Because I'm burning 4,000 calories a day, up to 4,400 calories a day. Um, and I need a significantly larger amount of carbohydrates than somebody who weighs 80 pounds and has cancer and is nearly on their deathbed, who needs not nearly as many carbohydrates, but needs significantly more amount of minerals and vitamins from their greens, from green juices, from healthier nutrient dense foods that are less in carbohydrates, right? So somebody who wants to be an athlete and who's burning a lot of, of uh, calories versus let's say even somebody who is somewhat sedentary but a little bit active mm -hmm. but wants to be uh, reduce inflammation or to heal digestive issues or to heal some disease going on again all of those goals the solutions are within a plant-based diet mm -hmm. but it's a different variation of that diet mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah definitely i like how how you pertain it to level of activity and also where you're at with your current health you know you can take that into consideration because you train what four hours a day you're doing double double sessions yeah. you're looking to build lean muscle mass you're wanting to increase strength so your body is requiring more nutrients more protein than just as you said somebody who is more sedentary but still someone who is more sedentary who switches over to a plant-based diet let's say let's say a truck driver who's overweight and they're able to bring a cooler with them and start transitioning over to a plant-based diet is going to see significant results even if they don't increase their level of activity yeah, I, I remember uh, Dave, the raw food trucker. He was a guy who spoke at some conferences I've produced in the past. Really incredible guy. Used to be like 200 pounds overweight. Mm. I think he weighed like 300 or 350 pounds or something. Um, he was a trucker that brought a cooler with him every day, but that cooler had a full ham in it. <laughs> and he <laughs> ate the whole ham in one sitting. And, uh, and he had like seven or eight diseases. He had like heart disease. He had mm. cancer. He had digestive uh, you know, uh, I don't remember if it was Crohn's or something. He had so many problems. And he switched to high dent. And this is a man who needed to lose weight, who didn't need more sugar, more carbohydrates, things like that, right? He needed nutrients and he needed it from plants. Mm -hmm. And so he started juicing and doing 30 day and 40 day and 60 day juice fast with mm -hmm. primarily, you know, green juices, mm -hmm. really green, rich juices. And guess what? He got off all his medication. Wow. All of his uh, symptoms were healed. Uh, all of his issues went away. And he lost all the weight and got down to like his normal body weight. And just it changed his life. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, if you go to the doctor with those issues, is the doctor going to tell you, you need to eat more meat and drink more milk? Have you ever heard that? Even from a doctor who has no nutritional education whatsoever. Medical yeah. doctors don't get more than four hours of nutritional education their entire time at school. What does a medical doctor even tell you if you go in with all those problems? Mm. Eat more fruit and vegetables, yep. right? Have you ever t heard a medical doctor tell you, you need more meat and dairy when you have cancer and diabetes and heart disease and blood clots and all these things? No, but you'll always hear, eat more fruit and vegetables. Yeah. But the, the, the detail on this is important. That it, you, know, you have to start researching and experimenting with these things yeah. and understand what your goals are and and then find the right path within the plant-based diet that's going to help you achieve those goals. If it's a significant need for healing of chronic degenerative mm -hmm. disease, it's going to be more herbs, more greens, less sugary foods, less carbohydrates, um, uh, things that are really rich in vitamins and nutrients and minerals and diversity within mm -hmm. that, right? Um, 
again, if you're trying to be an athlete, you need more protein. You're going to have to eat more legumes and more grains. You're going to have to eat more soy-based products, which we'll get into soy maybe in a different episode because there's so much misinformation on soy. And if you look at the scientific data on soy, soy is actually quite good for your body. If it's organic, it's not genetically modified and it's not grown with chemicals, it is quite good for your body. But it's one of those things you also don't want to depend on every single day. And that's why we know of so far hundreds of thousands of plants that have been identified in the world that are not only edible but medicinal. Mm. So when I say one diet does work for everybody, I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of options yeah. Yeah. within that one diet. You know, you can't say that for animal-based uh, diet, right? Mm. Because it's either turkey, chicken, fish, beef, or bison, <laughs> right? Within mm. that variation. Um, and again, if you're having those issues, no one's ever going to tell you to eat more meat. They're mm. always going to tell you eat more fruit and vegetables. And you talk to anybody that healed disease from uh, adding in more fresh fruits and vegetables, herbs, nuts, seeds, berries, legumes, these things, you will see that is significantly more common than the other way around. Um, and to kind of conclude this point a little bit, I want to talk about the benefits and detriments of meat and dairy mm. um, compared to benefits and detriments from plants because you might be asking, well, if someone's really eating a lot of meat, how are they performing at such a high level? How are they mm. doing so well? How are they healthy, etc.? And so, yes, there are benefits from meat and dairy. There are things like Protein, obviously, fats, sodium, potassium, vitamin B12, B6, magnesium, iron, those kinds of things, calcium. You absolutely do get those things. Mm -hmm. But the detriments that you get from uh, a plant, or the detriments you get from an animal based diet, which have been scientifically validated, you can research this yourself and I encourage you to, are shortened lifespan higher risk of cardiovascular disease, high acidity in the body, weakened immune system, impaired digestive system, higher risk for stroke, diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, erectile dysfunction, acne, and cancer. So those are the detriments associated and already scientifically validated with a high meat and dairy diet. Now, on the other side of that, you ask, well, what are the detriments associated with a high plant-based diet? And there are none. You can't find any. You simply can't. If it's a diverse, balanced, and abundant plant-based diet, there are no detriments whatsoever, especially if it's organic, it's not filled with chemicals, and you're eating the right proportions for your bodily needs. Mm -hmm. You can't. It's, you just don't associate spinach and kale and sweet potatoes with cancer. They actually do the opposite. Mm -hmm. They prevent and reverse cancer. Mm -hmm. But you can associate meat and dairy with getting cancer. So it's just those kinds of like eye-opening mm -hmm. moments that have led me and you and so many millions of people to realize, wow, if I don't need meat what, whatsoever, and I can not only survive but thrive on a plant-based diet, then why don't I do that? Mm -hmm. You know, if, it's, if it works for all these other people are doing all these amazing things, and why wouldn't it work for me? Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is if you do it right, it will work for you. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, research this further, and you can't just look up an article on Google and read one thing someone posted and absolutely believe it to be true, right? You need to, you know, that's why I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of researching because you'll find contradicting information. So then I'll ask this medical doctor, then I'll ask this nutritionist, I'll interview this holistic practitioner, I'll interview this person that had cancer and reversed it, and then I'll experiment it with it myself. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Experiment these things yourself, and if something's not working, figure out why it's not working, and then find a way to make it work. Because a plant-based diet does work for every single human being, and not only will it help you be healthier, but you'll live longer. Mm -hmm. You'll prevent these diseases, mm -hmm. you'll have more energy, mm -hmm. and you'll feel better in every single way. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's so potent and so true in all ways. One, one thing to take into consideration if you're new to all this and transitioning for the first time into more of a plant-based diet and you've been on the SAD diet, the standard American diet, is 
you, your body could go into a little bit of detoxing detoxing because suddenly you're giving it a chance to detoxify years and years and years of all this different toxins that build up in the body so just know you know experiment with it just like you said experiment with it if at first like you feel a little funky or something like that i definitely went through that I'm sure you went through some detoxing. Oh yeah, switching over. I was full of toxins and chemicals, <laughs> and it's especially true when you start eating more organic and then doing cleanses and fasts. You'll notice we call it a healing crisis. It, yeah, it's because all of a sudden all those chemicals and toxins are stored in your fats, and they start getting released through your blood system. And yeah, you don't feel good for a little while, but the cool thing is, is at the end of it, you feel amazing and way better than you've ever felt, right? Yeah, so just don't get discouraged when you first transition and suddenly you're like, oh, I'm not feeling all that well. That's actually, that's actually a really good sign, right. especially if you're doing everything that we're saying with the, the diversity and the balance and even as you just mentioned, being able to go more organic and just having that rainbow set of food on your plate. You know, the experiment with it. When I say experiment, do at least three months consistent consistently do it for three months and just notice how you're feeling along the way that's what that was something that i always do when whenever i'm going to experiment into something i'll journal about it see my emotions how my sleep's going how my thought clarity is doing and when i switched over to a plant-based diet i saw all of that improve dramatically yep and again don't discount the importance of having a lot of fresh greens and fruits, vegetables, herbs in your diet daily. I take huge handfuls of spinach and put it mm. on my plate and either make salads or put it in my tacos. I put it in my smoothies. Um, supplements, uh, organic plant-based protein supplements are also really great, especially if they're filled with herbs and mushrooms mm. and uh, you know a lot of you know berries, things like that to get higher levels of phytonutrients. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to thrive on a plant-based diet, but just know that switching to a plant-based diet, if you're following these steps correctly, you are going to not only feel better, but live longer and be healthier. And that's really what we all want. And at the end of the day, you're making a better decision for the life of the animals and for the life of the planet, because it's significantly more sustainable to be, eat plant-based than it is to eat animal-based. It's better on the environment, it's better on the planet, and it's better on our bodies. So that's it for today's episode. We appreciate you tuning in. We want to hear your questions, comments, thoughts. What do you want to hear in future episodes? Uh, what specific questions do you have about this? If you like this, head over to iTunes, give it a thumbs up, give it a five-star rating. Uh, you know, Share this on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever you are. We want to get this information out to as many people as possible and always appreciate you tuning in. And want to give another huge shout out to our sponsor, Performance T. Head over to performancetea.com to try their recovery, balance, focused, and energy teas. These teas are made from incredible healing herbal plants that help your body heal, gives you natural energy, helps prevent disease, and help you feel better in every way. Again, that's Performance T, that's T-E-A, performancetea.com, and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. That code works on their website and it also works on Amazon. Again, activate 15 and you'll get a 15% discount off of these amazing teas. And we look forward to talking to you in the next episode. Take care. Thank you for tuning in and remember to live with greatness in every area of your life.